Ooh, she's mad. We have already alert in Histerkrates Gigas enclosure. You see where the water level is. I know that there is a lot of reflection, but you see it is super, super low. And it is not due to evaporation. Look at this. I'm not sure how much you can see from this stupid reflection. There is a lot of reflection, unfortunately, but like this part is actually underwater. Water level is like here. And it is terrible. The reason for it is, you see this part, how moist it is. The water is climbing from here through the, through the cracks and pores and everything and going inside of the substrate. I was thinking that maybe something like this will happen, but I didn't thought that in just a couple of days the whole water will manage to travel through this path inside of the substrate to actually fill up the... Oh no, that means this failed. I cannot do this. And hopefully the tarantula is still alive and not drowned. This would be super embarrassing. I will grab my phone and check inside if we can see how the tarantula is. The phone actually got lighter on itself, so I can actually... Oh, thank God you can see female is down there and she seems... She seems alive and well. Thank oh yeah, she's moving. Awesome. But you know what that means? It means that I will need to dig her up. I will need to remove all of this substrate and put her in another enclosure because this just this just won't work like this. The solution for this problem would be having a drainage layer here, so all the all the excess water that will travel into the substrate it would actually drain into drainage layer, and then I could easily just siphon that out. But since this is a heavy burrower. If I put a drainage layer like, like this big, that means I would significantly reduce the amount of substrate inside of the enclosure, plus the torrential would probably just dig inside of the drainage layer. She would just destroy the, the mesh part and everything. She would just make a big mess out of it. So this torrential enclosure with waterfall, it officially failed. And check, this plant is starting to actually grow. You see small plants just growing like crazy. Oh. Such a shame, but I don't think that we need to waste this enclosure. I actually have an idea. Let me first take it outside, put it here on the table, and then I will tell you what I have in my mind. First I need to pull the plug and the plug is all the way back. The pump selector cable, that's the thing. Of course, the cable got stuck. Of course, of course that this cannot be easy, it can be complicated. And of course that it fell all the way down. Oh! No! Son of a... Well, this was harder than I expected. <laughs> oh, now you see, she's actually coming outside. This would be an excellent thing if I could lure her out so I don't need to dig her out. It would be much more convenient. Hey, hey, wanna, wanna play with me? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, she wants to play with me. I'm pretty sure she's actually hungry. I'm pretty... Ooh, <laughs> Ooh someone is hungry. Someone is hungry. Damn. Fortunately, this won't work. We will need to dig her out. And that could prove to be problematic. Plant is out. Now, I have no idea how this will turn out to be. Yeah, we have a cork bark here. Oof, I can see the water down there. But thankfully, you see, she didn't drown. This substrate is soaking wet. Super soaking wet. Look, look at this. I can drain the water out of it. But even though this enclosure failed for tarantula, I have an idea for which animal we can use this enclosure despite this, this problem. If you remember, ever since I gave away my, my Halloween crab, I said that I want to get a vampire crabs. I think this enclosure, once we modify it a bit, I think it would be perfect for those. So in case you are from Europe and know someone who is selling them and can ship them to Croatia, write it in the comments so I can order some. 
So where is the actual tarantula? You can see a water down there, right? She's actually walking on the water. That crazy girl. Just need to find her now and get her to come out. Oh yes! Look at this, if I can show you. You see, this is her leg. She is actually completely submerged in her tunnel. Crazy, too bad I cannot show you very well, but I will try to... Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh crap, what have I done? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see her coming out. You see, she is completely submerged down there. Oh yeah, yep. She's out of the water now. Oh, <laughs> she's actually walking in the water. She went over there. I'll need to break this tunnel so she cannot go inside. And now I need to push her from here. Hmm. Where is she? Where the hell did she go? Oh, she's all the way in the corner. Come on girl, sorry for messing with you, but this, oh. She's, oh, she beat the straw. Oh, oh, oh. oh she's mad. She's mad and on her back. Oh, 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 oh. Do you see that? It seems that we are getting there. Oh no no no. Sorry, sorry. No no the tunnel is the tunnel is closed. Yeah, go there. Yes. Oh, Whew, got it. This was a bit harder than expected. Wait here. I need some dry substrate inside of this bucket. And I made a terrible, terrible mess. And now we need to get her inside of this enclosure, but that should be easy. And we, oh, here. I know. I know girl, super stressful and apparently unnecessary, but it is more than necessary. But honestly, I was surprised how she was just utilizing the water and you have seen, she just walked inside of the water and she was actually inside of this tunnel that was completely filled with water. Apparently in nature, the burrows will get filled with water and that's the reason why all the, all the idea started with them diving into water and stuff. And this footage really showed that Tarantula didn't didn't mind the water, almost it looked like that. I don't know how other species would react because I never I never had this kind of setup with any tarantula and I never had a water inside of my tarantula burrow. So I don't know how comfortable with water the rest of the species are. But even though this enclosure was completely a failure, it showed some interesting behavior, right? Yeah, it definitely did. Now I will need to take all the substrate out, take all the water outside, uh, make a drainage layer, add a different type of substrate, kind of different type of substrate, I just hope that I have it. You know the mixture that I'm using in dart frog enclosure and other some other enclosures. I will do that, but unfortunately I cannot do it right away. So we will need to time jump and do it tomorrow. So time jump and I'm back. In the meantime of camera, you see I added one thing. I added this section so the barrier between the substrate and the actual water is much higher. So hopefully the water won't be able to climb up effectively as it was. So this is actually fresh, you see, I just made this, so it is still not cured. We are going to add the clay balls here. I checked if I have all the materials for the substrate and you see they are all here waiting to be used. But before that, you see, I have these three packages. They are fan mail and we are going to open them first. And there was also one package from US that I was supposed to receive, but I wasn't really able to pick it up for two reasons. First of all, it was addressed to Spider Petco. So I had a hard time convincing people at the post office that that, is, that that package is actually for me because they ask you for ID and on my ID, I don't have written Spider Petco. So that was one problem. The other problem, the package had a written value. I don't really know how much, but because of that, they asked me to give them information about what is inside of the package so they can run it through customs and charge me customs for that. I mean, taxes or whatever, but I couldn't do that because I don't know what is in the package. I don't know from who it is or anything in regards to that. And I tried to explain them that, but they wanted to charge me a substantial amount regardless. So I couldn't really accept it because I have no idea what is inside. And unfortunately they had to return that package. So whoever sent me that package, 
I'm sorry, but if you want me to be able to receive it, you must not write the value of the package. I mean, the value of the package must not be greater than like $20 or something like that. In case you are sending a package from European Union, it doesn't matter because we don't have customs within the, between the countries, but if you are sending from US or any other country, I cannot accept it if the value is greater than $20 or maybe $30, I'm not sure. So yeah, mind that. Let's open this. <laughs> These packages shouldn't contain any live animals, at least I hope so. So let's check out what I got. <laughs> <laughs> what, are what the hell? Mm -hmm. These are from Igor and he's a pharmacist and he's sending me these in case I want to use them for spiders. Honestly, I wouldn't really use them for keeping spiders because they aren't transparent and you cannot see the spider from outside. But I will certainly find some use for, for some storage or something. And funny thing, my girlfriend is also a pharmacist. And also he asks for a shout out for his, for his wife Natalia. Shout out. <laughs> and let Igor get his first tarantula. Thank you for the cans. Uh, no, no, cans. Thank you for the candy. <laughs> Next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? 10 euros. <laughs> Why are there 10 euros inside? A book. Ah, there is a note on the book. Can you sign it and send it back? That's why there's 10 euros for postage, I assume. Ooh, and some sort of art. Pokey. Dilek, thank you for this. I will sign you the, the book and send you back. And you are asking for the update on Fmbopus Cianoblops. Second. Efebopus cyanognatus. I had three in total. I gave away one and then the other one died. So I'm only left with one. But thankfully this one seems completely fine. It's gross and everything. So once it gets a bit bigger, I will feature it in some, in some other video. Feeding video or something, of course. Thank you and next package. Last package. Plastic containers. <laughs> you can never have too many candy and plastic containers. That is the reality. Sebastian, thank you for the candy and the enclosures and shout out to your to your daughter Lia that colored this for me. Uh, you are asking about Klaus Gramostola Pulherpes. Yes, I have a big female. Well, not super big, but kinda big. You see, she's down there. She should be mature and also I have somewhere here behind. I have a male that is ready to molt. He'll probably do it soon and potentially he'll be ultimate mold so that means if he molds into his ultimate mold you know haba haba time so yeah i will feature them in the future video if that happens now let me remove all of this clean everything and fix this enclosure no i don't have my mouth full with candy i'm totally totally not now we are going to mix the mix the substrate i'm going to use this trusty bucket and this will be my my measuring thing so one piece of leaf litter, one part sphagnum moss, half part of orchid bark, half part of uh, peat moss, peat moss, a bit of charcoal, actually all of this. Ooh. Oof, what have I done? But you cannot see what I'm doing, right? I added all those ingredients and now we are going to mix them all up. Oh, this is hard to do with one hand. <laughs> There we go. Now, cleanup crew. Let's not forget about cleanup crew. Those are the sprinkles, you know. I have this small colony. I'm going to use all of them. Actually, there is not that much of them inside. So I will also need to use another colony. It's funny how they float on water. They don't sink, they just walk on it. Now with the substrate ready, we need to add the clay balls. They will be the drainage layer of the enclosure. All the excess water from the substrate will go in that drainage layer. So that will prevent the substrate from going soggy, as it was at the beginning of this video. This should be more than enough. Hopefully, you see, now we can have a lot of water inside without the need to drain it. But of course, as the water level rise here in the drainage layer, we will just siphon it all out and get it back here, where we actually need that water. Now I need a mesh. So we can separate the substrate from the drainage layer. I didn't measure anything, I'm just trying it all out. There, now it's ready for the substrate. Toop, 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 toop. 
This would now also be an awesome enclosure for dart frogs, but I would prefer a uh, grab since we don't have any of them. And yeah, in first part of this video, I said that I need a breeder, breeder or seller that sells them, but in the meantime, I found one, so no need for comments. I should probably get them in a few weeks. So don't worry about that. And to finish it up with, yeah, cork bark, some pieces of wood, and of course, leaf litter. But this time on top of the, the soil. A random place for this cork bark and this piece of wood yeah there we go i guess it is complete once again for the second time right now i will put it on its place i will fill it up and let it run to see how it will hold but actually i need to wait first for this part to cure because under this we have a silicone that needs to cure and if i close it all off and fill it with water and let it run it will be high humidity inside and therefore silicone will have hard time curing so i need to let it sit now but that would be everything for this enclosure <laughs> for this video i mean when i get the crepes i will make an Another video we will let them inside and see how they will use this enclosure until then i hope you enjoyed this video if you did thumbs it up and comment something if you want to support this channel even more there's a patreon page if you are new to this channel make sure to subscribe apple every monday and fridays so see you again soon bye, -bye.